This survey also asked if these U.S. military men would fire upon U.S. citizens who refuse or resist confiscation of firearms banned by the U.S. government. Did you notice the federal tax agents dressed like military patrolling the roads during the Waco siege or the black military helicopters at each of the Indy 500 races for the past several years? We found that these state facilities are being built in the middle of U.S. Army property, not just in Indiana, but other states, as people sent us pictures of such facilities in their states, such as this facility at Camp Pinckney in Brighton, Michigan. You see not only the black vans here, but curiously, there are reverse swastikas carved into each end of the roof. We also began to receive information about the Federal Emergency Management Agency known as FEMA, such as these pictures of a FEMA facility in Texas. FEMA operations are divided into ten regions, as we were told in this letter from FEMA. The American public has been led to believe that FEMA is for disaster relief operations. Yet if we look at military manuals such as FM 4130, the U.S. Army Civil Affairs and Operations Manual, you'll find the details about who FEMA really is. The government doesn't want this information out because, as you can see, the manual says to destroy it by any means that will prevent its dissemination. The manual says that FEMA is the executive agency that serves as the point of contact for the USG for emergency management within the United States. Under Executive Order 12148 of July 20, 1979, the President transferred all functions from the Civil Defense Civil Preparedness Agencies under the Department of Defense to FEMA. FEMA develops and implements overall concepts and policy guidance and directs activities for nationwide plans and preparedness for emergencies during peace and war. It also develops plans, systems, and capabilities for protection of the U.S. populace, government, and industry, and for stabilization of the economy in time of emergency. Again, we see from this military manual that FEMA is divided into ten regions and is the command and control agency for all emergency planning. None of this sounds too sinister until you begin to find out what FEMA has done with 96% of their budget. FEMA has built prisons around the country and they've also built underground facilities. It actually turns out that they are the key agency to implement a plan known as Operation Garden Plot, the plan to put American citizens in prison camps. Under Executive Order 12919, signed by Bill Clinton on June 3, 1993, presidential authority under a 1950s Defense Production Act was delegated to the Secretaries of Defense, Agriculture, Treasury, and Commerce to seize all civilian property for the government solely by declaring them necessary for national defense. It also gave the Director of FEMA the authority to implement FEMA plans during a national emergency. Most people don't realize that this country has been in a declared state of emergency since the Federal Emergency Act was enacted in 1933, which was the beginning of FEMA, and also gave presidents the authority to issue executive orders. Each president since then has issued an executive order declaring a state of national emergency. Bill Clinton has issued three such orders since he took office. Shown here is a FEMA facility in Denton, Texas, where you can see mile after mile of FEMA command and control trailers. These trailers are self-sustaining and contain electrical generators and communications equipment that can be moved down anywhere in the country to start a FEMA operations center. Several military manuals, such as these manuals, ranging from 1985 through 1994, speak of FEMA as the implementing agency for Operation Garden Plot, the plan to put American citizens in prison camps under military control. This 1994 field manual for military police speaks of Operation Garden Plot as a DOD civil disturbance plan that tells the military what they can and cannot do and that they will operate under FEMA control. Several thousand U.S. troops are training in the U.S. this summer and fall, and if we look around us, we can see plenty of the signs and symptoms of a global takeover under the auspices of the United Nations taking place right here in our country.
These trucks are Soviet trucks imported from eastern Germany, parked at a private facility in the DeSoto National Forest in Sotier, Mississippi, just outside Gulfport off Highway 59. A sign on the facility says Airmar. Airmar is privately owned, but the signs on fences around the facility say this is a U.S. Customs facility. Several acres of federal forest land was bulldozed to create this customs facility solely for Airmar. No one knows for sure what this facility really is, but one thing is certain, it's not what we're being told it is. And there are 750 Soviet chemical trucks sitting in Mississippi whose sole use is to spray chemicals and nerve gas in chemical warfare operations. What are they doing in Mississippi? What are they doing on U.S. soil? And why are they under the protection of the U.S. government if they are privately owned? Senator Sam Nunn from Georgia was quoted as saying he was certain the American public would welcome the Soviet troops as peacekeeping forces in the United States. Not only have these Soviet trucks been found in Mississippi, people recently photographed these two clearly marked Soviet vehicles in Texas. This train full of American-made tanks was one of seven such trains that passed through Indianapolis en route to Fort Lewis, Washington in June. We were told that this was the third armored division returning from Europe. Yet Fort Lewis has such a severe housing shortage that many military families are actually living in tents. Yet this whole division is being sent there. Three other such trains passed through Indianapolis in early August. One heading to Fort Riley, Kansas, another to Alabama, and the third to Fort Lewis, Washington. Are these tanks part of Operation Garden Plot? To be used to round us up for the slave labor camps? Along with the black helicopters and federal law enforcement that look like active duty military stationed in our roadways as they were in Waco. Welcome to the New World Order. Expect no mercy. Here are your coffins, which you paid for, with your tax money. There are millions of them waiting for you in different states across the country. Each coffin can hold three or four people, and most of you will be crammed into one right after martial law is declared in America. Your President George Bush is an important member of the Illuminati. The master plan of this satanic group of puppets is a new world order. Their goal is to kill 90% of the world's population so they can better control the rest of us, and they will start in America. They have already built many industrial ovens inside the FEMA death camps. These ovens will be used to get rid of the dead bodies, however, even burning these ovens day and night they will not be faster than the gas killing hundreds to thousands of people at a time. So the plastic coffins will be used to store the rotting bodies. interlocking network of official functionaries, spies, mercenaries, ex-generals, profiteers, and super patriots who for a variety of motives operate outside the legitimate institutions of government. Presidents have turned to them when they can't win the support of the Congress or the people, creating that unsupervised power so feared by the framers of our Constitution. Just imagine that William Casey's dream came true. Suppose the enterprise grew into a super-secret, self-financing, self-perpetuating organization. Suppose they decided on their own to assassinate Gorbachev, or the leader of white South Africa. Could a president control them? And what if he became the enterprise's public enemy number one? Who would know? Who would say no? The secret government will continue in a few moments. With the history of our secret government. War II was over. Europe lay devastated. The United States emerged as the most powerful nation on earth. But from the rubble rose a strange new world, a peace that was not peace and a war that was not war. We saw it emerging when the Soviets occupied Eastern Europe. The Cold War had begun. An iron curtain has descended across the continent. Behind that line lie all the capitals of the ancient states of Central and Eastern Europe. 
The Russians had been our ally against the Nazis, an expedient alliance for the sake of war. Now they were our enemy. To fight them, we turned to some of the very men who had inflicted on humanity the horrors of Hitler's madness. We hired Nazis as American spies. We struck a secret bargain with the devil. Did you just hear him correct? He said that the same Nazis that were building the concentration camps in World War II, the same Nazis that were putting Jews in these concentration camps, we took in. We brought them over here and gave them jobs. Think about that for a minute. One that I know real well is Klaus Barbie. He was wanted by the French as their number one war criminal. 